Hi, everybody. Welcome to our third Let's Chat. Um, we have moved. We've moved rooms. We've moved places. I think we're playing mu musical chairs, the three of us are. Um, but we just want to welcome you to our third Let's Chat. And as you can see, we're sitting a bit differently. Uh, there's some words flying around here that I absolutely hate, and it's social distancing. Um, I don't know. It just, I don't like it. I don't like the idea of it. It feels uncomfortable. I'm going to be honest with you guys. And you know I've told you this. I've told you from the beginning. I don't like it. Um, but I also know that we have people that know a lot more about the situation, especially around here in our community. We've got doctors and nurses on the front lines. I found out uh, this morning that someone that I've known for many years, she is um, right on the front lines mm. with COVID-19 patients. And um, so it makes you think twice. And so this has been hard. Have you guys second guessed what you're doing? Oh my. I still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just trying to figure out the right thing, guys. And I know that, that those of you that are watching this, you're feeling the same way. The people that I've talked to, we're just hanging in there, doing one day at a time. Um, but we're trying to do the right thing. And so with that, Romans 13 reminds us that our elected officials are um, chosen by God. We may like them, but we may not. We may think they're doing a good job in the middle of this, or we may be frustrated. Um, one thing I have to say is, is please pray for them, because... They're doing the best that they can in a difficult situation, and they're trying to help us. And, and, and the only way, I read this statement this morning, the only way to stop this virus is to starve it, yep. and that's starving it of people. And so we're doing our part. We are now practicing social distance, so much so that we have measured. So um, it's a little bit different today. I'm going to turn it over to Mark. He's going to get us started. He has some announcements. Hi, all. Uh, even though we are distanced, uh, not only us, but from you, uh, we are together. Uh, always know that. We think about you often. Uh, we pray for you all the time. And we encourage you to pray for the pastors here, the leadership here, uh, because uh, as Pastor Cecily said, we don't, we're taking it one day at a time. Uh, we don't know. And uh, we're trying. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's wide open uh, for ministry. And with that said, uh, we are going to open the church up on April the 2nd. April the 2nd, the church will be open uh, from, uh, let's say, from 1 to 3. Is that a good time? We never it talked about good. the time. We never talked about the time. <laughs> does, yeah. that, does that sound good? But if someone's working, but then again, should we do it later in the evening, like from 4 to 6? You're going to watch how we make decisions here, <laughs> because we point. didn't talk about time. Uh, how about three to five? Well, you went. Uh, we'll just sometime it'll be open sometime. <laughs> no, let's let's do this. Let's do let's do three to five. Three to five. Three to five on April second. Is that okay? That works. See, that's how we make decisions. Just like this, is how we did. And you can see we're winging it. <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of there. Precise, but, very but precise. But we all are on board and 100 percent that we need to open the church up for uh, three reasons. Uh, one, to pray. Okay, there'll be a, a prayer vigil place, some place to pray. Uh, it will be disinfected, and it will be uh, I will be here or someone will be here, uh, probably me. Uh, to keep it as a as personal as we can in other words if if a couple comes in if you're here we're going to kind of put you in a holding pattern until they get done uh, also uh, our food pantry uh, the items and and I wish I had a bulletin to mention uh, what those items are but the items for the food pantry uh, they have about a week or two yes and then it's sense. going to run out Okay, so on the second, if you want to bring food items, and it's right now it's whatever, mac and cheese, whatever it is, whatever we're responsible for, if you have a bulletin at home, uh, look at that, and you can bring that at this time on April 2nd from 3 to 5. And also, uh, again, a lot of you have asked about your tithes and offerings. Uh, we mentioned on our last chat about mailing them in. Uh, you can find the address to the church at the bottom of any of the pages on the website. If you scroll to the bottom, 
the address for the church is there. It's LCBC 154 Homewood Road, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26101. Or on the 2nd, uh, when you come on the 2nd, if you want to bring your tithes and offerings in, uh, there'll be a place to put those. Okay, so that's the big announcement. Also, I encourage you to keep uh, checking the website. Uh, there's been additions since uh, yesterday even. There was things added. Right. Or Wednesday. 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 Uh, it seems like yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, there were things added to the website. Also, Pastor Cecily's been working on that, uh, trying to get an announcement page in there. That's going to be coming. And uh, I've emailed uh, to her. She probably hasn't seen it yet, but uh, the men's... Uh, Notice, the Ephesians 2:10 is is up going to be updated, and she's also updated the women's uh, notice like a couple weeks ago or so. Right, it was about our devotional that we about had. the devotional so coming. Go, there's more coming, and there'll be more on that. So just check the website, and uh, you'll see uh, what's going on there. Also, you have all our emails, all four of our emails. Uh, you're going to see a youth chat. Pastor Cole has uh, done that, and it's going to show up on YouTube. I encourage you to uh, watch that, all your youth, get them to watch that. And this, this uh, third chat will be coming up uh, next week. So Easter's coming. We've talked about Easter a lot. And uh, uh, right now we really, we, we kind of have an idea. Uh, it may be uh, online. It may be pre-recorded. It may be a, a service outside. Uh, we're not sure yet. Okay, we're kind of waiting to see as things change daily, uh, not only in our state but around the country, uh, of what, what, what does God want done here? You know, it's not about us. Uh, we, and it's such a, a huge holiday, uh, but as we look at it now, uh, every day is a huge holiday. God's given you a gift today. And, but Easter is so, somewhere where the whole world uh, celebrates uh, Jesus Christ. And I want, uh, I want what God wants, and that's what our other pastors want to. Uh, we've talked, we've argued, we discussed, and, we've, and, and we don't know. But I want to kick it to Pastor Tom. He's got some thoughts about that before he gets in to Exodus. Pastor Tom? Yeah, we're, uh, like everybody said, we're, we're just kind of in no man's land. And for a lot of us, that's, that's not a good place to be because uh, we, we want to control uh, what's going on uh, but uh, we're going to continue to do what the Lord wants us to do uh, we're going to still be mindful of who he is in our life uh, we're not going to turn our back on the Lord now uh, I hope I hope you feel the same way uh, and I hope these these uh, chat sessions are encouraging um, it, it's not just us getting together and and and, and doing this it's, it's, it's with a purpose uh, and that is to uh, encourage uh, uh, the members of our church and, and those those who watch and uh, we may have to do a little CPR first aid before we get through, uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, we just want to do and be faithful in doing what God wants us to do. So before we get into Exodus uh, chapter 17, if you're following along with us, uh, that's where we're going to be in some scripture right now. Let's, let's look at the Lord in prayers uh, as before we go. Father, we're, we're grateful for who you are, who you have always been, even in our time of, of the darkest times in our lives and, and not uh, even... Uh, maybe recognizing who you are in our life, dear Father, but we know you're always there. Uh, Lord, open up our hearts and our minds to see you, uh, to, to grab our strength from you, uh, even through this time of uncertainty, uh, the time of, of, of being um, uh, scared, being either unprepared, overprepared, uh, not understanding how to be prepared. Uh, but one thing we can always do is we can be mindful of you in our life, always lean on you in our time of, of need, uh, pray for those who need prayer. Father, we have so many in our church who are on the front lines of this. We have so many medical staff people that attend our church. We have school teachers that attend our church. Uh, we have school board members that attend our church uh, that are making decisions uh, that are very difficult decisions to make because right now it's not just a decision of necessity. It's a decision of life. Um, this disease is taking control. Uh, we see it uh, continuing to grow and the effects of it. But right now, Father, we want to focus on you. We want to focus on how you love us and how you take care of us and how you're always there for us. We love you. We praise you. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
Exodus chapter 17. This, this is a very a familiar piece of scripture. I know it seems like I say that a lot, uh, maybe because I think to me uh, that every piece of scripture is a familiar piece of scripture. I don't know. I mean, is that how you guys feel too? Or Yes. Because, you know. I I'm mean, okay over here, by the way. Thanks for are you all right? saving me. Yeah, I'm okay. Well, I mean, we can. And you know, there's we, water in here, just so you know. Diet. Uh, what, what do you got? What do you got? My red solo cup. Yes, you got <laughs> solo. Dr. Pepper. So yeah, we're, you know we're 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 dwindling down. So if anybody could send Diet Do by the truckloads, <laughs> I'll give you my address at the end of this. There, that hit the spot. So I won't I won't choke. Exodus chapter 17. We we see the beginning of this chapter. We see that that uh, Moses is taking the children of Israel and he's taken through the desert. And now they're complaining that they're having no water. Uh, so. God and being His infinite wisdom, um, He allows Moses to uh, to take the, his rod, the staff that, that God had given to him, and he smote uh, a rock, uh, and, and the uh, the water flowed, and uh, gave uh, gave the children of Israel enough water to not only uh, for their needs, but for their for their animal, their livestock, whatever they whatever they needed, um, and that's something that's important for us to to know that God has always provided everything that we need, uh, no matter. Uh, when it comes or how it comes um, and in this time we see Moses as really the leader of the children of Israel almost like the leader of the church as pastors um, almost to the point where he's probably tired of listening to uh, the Israelites complaining right uh, right now um, we're in a situation where there's not a lot, not a lot we can do uh, like Pastor Mark said a little bit ago we have discussed we have we have all have our own theory on things, uh, but it comes down to what is best for Lubeck Community Baptist Church. It's, it's, it's a safety. It's a safety thing, and that, that will always be forefront. Serving our, our Lord and also being safe through that is, is always going to prevail, always, and that's always going to be in the front part of our mind. So we get in, into verse 8 here after, after Moses uh, shows the miracle of God. I don't know about you, but I've never been able to take a, a stick and go outside and bang on a rock and water flow. Uh, it's never happened. Um, not saying that it couldn't if, if God allowed it to happen in my life, but I, I've, I've, never, I've never done it. It's never happened for me. So to me, that, that's an amazing miracle. Uh, and so we go on and we see the Israelites battle Amalek. And, and what, is, what, is, what is, is, is amazing to me with Amalek is, is we go back, we go through uh, the family tree of, of Israel, and we know that Amalek is, is a grandson of Esau. Uh, and, and so we, we, we know that there, there is a, a, a tribal family thing that's going on. But in verse 8 it says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in, in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. The same rod that was used to, to strike the rock at Horeb and provide water with. And verse 11 says, And came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand uh, down, Amalek prevailed. So, so here's Moses. Moses goes up on top of the hill above where all the fighting is going on, and this is really the first time that we see in Scripture that, that God allows the Israelites to actually physically go out and fight on their own, because as they've left, left Egypt, God provided the fight. He, he, he stood in, in the gap for them. He provided a way for them to escape. Uh, and, and this is the first time that Israel was really uh, on their own, uh, physically fighting. Um, and so we see that, that Moses was there, and not only Moses, but, but his brother Aaron and, and, and his brother-in-law Hur, who was married to Moses' sister Miriam. And, and here they are up on this hill. They're overlooking uh, what's going on before them. And so verse 12 says, But Moses' hands were heavy. And he took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down the sun. So it was important to know that, that yeah, that, that, that even Moses, holding his hands high to heaven during the battle, his hands were beginning to be heavy. But they noticed that when his hands came down, that the enemy was prevailing. And so, so they've tried to figure out what, what could they do to help. They, they needed to, to lift up Moses' hands. When Moses' hands were lifted up high towards heaven, then the Israelites was, was winning. And, and I think the Lord put this upon our hearts today to share with you. 
was the importance of we still got to raise our hands and praise the Lord no matter what's going on in our life. Yeah, sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get disgusted. Sometimes we don't understand why things are the way they are. But we continue to see the miracles of God. We go back and we look at the first part of this, this chapter and we see that God had brought them from some place that they were a slavery as. They were enslaved in Egypt. They were, they were treated awful. Uh, they, 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 they had no life of their own. But now they're, they're beginning to move from being a slave to being a child of God and, and, and to, to, to move on their own. I think sometimes that's a difficult thing for us. Uh, we get set in our ways. Uh, I know that my house right now is kind of discombobulated. My dog has, she's flipped out. She has no uh, understanding. Why is everybody home? You know, usually, usually certain days it's, it's puppy and daddy time, okay? Because everybody's gone and it's just me and the dog. And we hang out and we do things and I feed her things that she's not allowed to have. Uh, especially she likes Doritos. Don't tell my wife that. Does that make her breast stink? Like breast stink? It makes it sound like... It's like nacho cheese. Okay, nacho so, cheese. Nacho yeah. cheese. Okay. So when my wife buys Doritos, she says, well, I just bought a big party size bag of Doritos. What happened to them? <laughs> I don't know what happened to them. So everything is, is everybody's in, is in their own weird thing. Um, I laughed and said at, the, at my place of employment because I always tell Kathy Hauser, that, or she says I don't work. So I, I, I want to make sure everybody understands my place of employment. Uh, they gave me a letter the other day said I was essential to the works of the, of the plant. No one's ever said I was ever essential. No one? No one. So I don't know what that means. I, I don't know if I should take that letter and frame it someplace, or I'm not sure. Did you get a raise? We, I get one in April. I'd frame it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, I get a raise in April. Thanks for reminding me of that. But anyway. I expect your tithes to come up a little bit. No, my my tithes ought to come up a little bit, yeah. And then we're coming in to, to do it. Anyway, uh, so he, here, here is Moses. He's trying his best. And just, just as we are, um, I think a lot of people uh, neglect the fact that, that in the ministry, uh, sometimes you get tired. Uh, sometimes you're spiritually tired. Sometimes you're physically tired. Sometimes uh, you, you, just, you just have uh, to where your mind will just shut off. Uh, you don't know where to go next or, or really what to, to lean on. But God always provides. God always provides. And because of, of, of Moses willing to stand there and keep his hands raised and, and others helping him uh, they were able to win um, right now that's what we need we need to keep our hands raised high we need, we need to, to continue to pray for, for uh, our country and our leaders uh, like Cecily said a little bit ago um, in Romans 13 it's, it, we ha it, it, is, it is on us to pray for our, right. for our leaders you know Right now, it's awful to think that this has turned into a political thing. In some, in some ways, it has. And that's, that's terrible. Li lives are at risk. Lives, you know, that's the most important thing. Um, and let us not, let us not uh, ever forget when we see the statistics that come out and they continue to talk about those who have passed, man, that, those, those are lives. Right. Those are lives. Uh, I thought about that today a little bit. Uh, I was looking through a bulletin that we had, and it was a couple of services ago, we had like 285 people here on a Sunday morning. And I thought about that in comparison to those who've passed. That's what died yesterday, was 285 people. Yeah, that's kind of breathtaking, isn't it, to think about that? It's the, it's the, it's the entire congregation, right. you know? And, and, and I think, I think we, we overlook the importance of that. Uh, but let's keep our hands held high. Let, let's... Let, let's raise our hands towards heaven. Let's know that God is able. Uh, and if you don't believe God is able, we're, when we get done here, we'll pray uh, and let you see that God is able. God is able to get us through this. I, like I said, you hear Pastor Mark say it a lot. Uh, he is God and I am not. And, and I don't know why. Uh, I wish I knew why. I, 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 would, I would feel a whole lot better um, about why. But it's not for me to question why. It's my, it's my belief to, to believe in what God has for all of us. And, and uh, you know, I pray. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going, going to slide over to, to our, our smarter panel, panel people than me, is um, I hear a lot of ignorance out there of people saying why this disease is coming. Okay? 
Do not listen to ignorant people. Do not listen to ignorant people. When you hear that ignorance, shut it off. Okay? Get into the Word of God. Get on your knees in prayer. Don't allow that ignorance to come into here. All right? Fester here. Grow here. And then be fruitful here. That's what happens. It comes in our ears. We let the seed grow in our mind. We let it, we let it root in our hearts. And then the fruit comes out of our mouth. Uh, so be careful about what you listen to. Be careful to listen to these, these people who, who, who are just wanting to be, add more. This shouldn't be a time that we continue to add scare tactics to people. Right. You know, uh, There's no doubt I want people to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's, that's why we're here. That's why I was called in ministry is to share the love of Jesus Christ and let people know that he loves us. Uh, and I don't want to do it in a scare tactic. I, you know, and these people are, are, are trying to turn this into something that it's not. It is a, it's a horrible disease that, that Lord willing will be under control. But as Moses did, he continued to raise his hands. These people learned to fight because they never had to fight before. These Israelite people learned to fight, uh, and, and God was with them. So we, we need to fight, not, I mean, not amongst each other, right. but uh, we need to fight for the same goal. Uh, and all of us are, 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 are very better at some fighting, right? Right? I mean, you're, you're better at some fighting than I would be, you know. I'm better at fleeing probably than you are, yes. Well, fleeing, fighting, whatever you got to do. I mean, yeah. survival. Of the, of, well, my, my, my part would be the final, uh, survival of the unfittest. <laughs> unfittest. And, and, yes. and going along, just, just let me, I want to say this. Uh, well, before you kick it to Pastor Cecily, that uh, when his arms got tired, two come alongside. Yep. Right. That's what we're here for. Right. That's why those phone calls that we make weekly. Uh, that's why you know our phone numbers. You know our emails. We're going to come alongside. You keep your hands raised. You keep your eyes on him, and we're going to come alongside you. Yep. We're going to go through this together. I think that's what that means. And they did that and steadied his hands until sunrise or sunset, sunset. So we're going to study this together. We're going to go through it together. Good scripture. Yeah, it was good scripture. And I think a good reminder there is that when his hands came down and, and they began to lose, it showed that God was in charge. And, you know, I've said this from the beginning in each one of these. I think I've talked about or we have talked about trusting God's promises. Um, and it's interesting, you went to Exodus 17. My devotion this morning was in Jeremiah 42 and 43. And it was when the people, you know, they, they went to Jeremiah and said, tell us what to do. This remnant was left. And they said, and we will do it. And they said like three times, we'll do what the Lord says. Yeah. And interestingly, when Jeremiah told them, the Lord says, stay here. Don't go to Egypt. And you know what they did? They went to Egypt. They didn't like what Jeremiah said. And they went right back to the place of slavery. Yep. And so it was a, a She Reads Truth devotional this morning, and there was a quote in there, and it said, the reason we struggle to obey God is because we struggle to trust God. And that just struck home with me. You know, I got to tell you guys, I'm sure us here, you there, it's wearing on us a little bit. It's a little bit frustrating. We don't know what to do. Sort of feel like our basis for making good decisions is gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just changed, and so we're trying to get our footing. And, um, and, and, and the, the devotional went on, so that struck me. And I'm sitting there for a second going, wait a minute, you know, that is so true. And it said, it went on, and it said, we must trust God more and trust ourselves less. And you guys guessed it. He must increase, and we must decrease. John 3.30. So here I was reading it, holding my, my, um, my phone and my Bible and this bracelet on, and that's exactly where it went. And I really like that because we wear these all the time. But God has put us in a place now where we can really grow in that. Um, Good point. And, you know, it, it, it takes me to the promises, and, and it's in many, many places, but 2 Corinthians um, 318 says we all are being transformed and this has been I pulled pulling just a piece of it but it says we're being transformed into glory to glory yep. from glory to glory um, and uh, 
And there's a great song from glory to glory that's out right now. And I think understanding that um, 1 John 3, 2 says what, what we will be has not yet been revealed. Yep. And so we don't know. But we have to remember it won't always be this way. And um, remembering to trust God. So I, I really like, you know, where you went with that. We've got to keep our hands raised to God. We've got to hang on to his promises. We've got to know that he is faithful. Um, and in the meantime, it's one step at a time. And I got to tell you, I'm stumbling a little bit because I, I, I'm struggling in just knowing what the right decisions are. I don't yep. know about you guys. Yep. Absolutely. I struggle. And... Pastor Cecily uh, let us know that you need to be truthful about that. Yeah, I, I think we do. I you think know, we need you to, need to be honest it. and truthful, and not only you know in our prayer, but with each other. Mm -hmm. right. you know? uh, I think of a time uh, that I was taught that if you are in trouble or in need, if you don't say that, yeah. how are we to know? Yeah. You know, how are we to know? So. Uh, I appreciate their honesty. You know, there's some around here that, uh, you know, and sometimes uh, in in my life, in the busyness of it, which you wouldn't think I'd be busy right now, but it's been absolutely a whirlwind. Uh, it, I, I soon, I think Satan allows me to kind of forget that or forego it somewhat. But I'm reminded when I get around them. And so when I'm not, I'm kind of out there like a little dog looking for a, a treat. You know, I'm running and jumping and looking and there's nothing there. But I think that's the way we are with God. You know, he's, he's, he's where we go when we need uh, those tough questions answered. You know? Yeah, that's where we got to watch the social distancing. You know, we still got to reach out and talk to each other, what yeah. we're feeling, what we're thinking. You know, I would encourage all of you that are watching this, you know, you've got somebody you can talk to, but most of all, we always have God, and we can take him those frustrations. You know, God, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I, I, I feel alone. Um, I'm alone with my thoughts. What did you say, Tom? Those seeds get planted? Yeah, seeds get planted. Things grow. Man, this is a time we've got to be so careful. I think that's why I don't like those words, social distancing, because, yeah, we may need to do it. It's physical distance, I would argue, than so, rather than social. But we need to be careful because, boy, the enemy can use it. i got to tell you, I did an experiment the other night, uh, evening. Kathy and I stopped at Kroger to get essentials. <laughs> and I'll let you guess what those may be. Uh, but she had to get more essentials than I did. And I'm standing up behind the cash registers a good distance. And I'm standing there, and people are coming by me. And I, not the first couple, but the second, they made a little re you around me. Went a little bit further <laughs> And I didn't realize what it was going. And then I realized as the couple come back the other way, they did it again. And they were going around me to make sure they had a distance right, from me. Right, their distance. Yeah. So I, my experiment was this. I stepped forward a little bit, uh -huh. and the next couple coming along, they went even farther out around me. I'm thinking, what is that? It almost was the point that I just wanted to grab and say, you know, but that's not good. what we need to do. Right, but you it know? doesn't feel good, does it? Doesn't, it doesn't, it, it wasn't. It's I, hard. So I, Kathy said, where were you? Well, I'm staying, I said, I'm doing, I'm doing an experiment. Oh, I, st I stayed there for, <laughs> I stand there for 15, yeah, I'm going to talk, and everyone went around me. <laughs> and they were they were different age groups and they all yeah. just saw me i was kind of and and by the time the experiment was over i was in the middle of the aisle <laughs> and they were going behind me a distance and so i told her she says you're an idiot but that's what you all know anyway <laughs> so anyways it, it it's i don't know what to, i don't what do we do it is the right we have thing to, to do, do that we do i started this by saying that quote i read we've got to starve the virus that's the way to get rid of it is to starve it right now and so, you know, please, we are not advocating that you don't do that. In fact, we are advocating that you that do. That you do, absolutely. You know, because we, God placed people that, that know best, you know, know the most about this virus. Yeah. Um, but 
it's not easy. That's mm -hmm. what we're here to talk to you about. Just, yeah. just let you know, it, we get it. We know what you must be feeling. That wasn't an so official, sorry I interrupted you. That but. wasn't an official CDC experiment, was it? Did you take your, your data that you yeah. got and send it to them? And No, that was official Mark, you're an idiot experiment. <laughs> so, yeah. According See, to I, I think I, I think I think we get to the point sometimes we want God to minister to us where we used to be and not where we should yeah, be or where we are right yeah. now. Right? And, and I think I think that 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 is a that's a scary yeah. thing sometimes. Is you know we sing that song, uh, uh, I'll uh, lead me and I'll follow. Yeah. Uh, you know we, we we say God wherever you want me to be I'll be there uh, until God really wants us someplace and we're thinking ah, I'm not real sure that's where. That's where I want to be. You know? And at the end of that course or verse, kind of gets a course, it says all the way. Yeah, all the I'll way. I'll be with you all the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's amazing to me how we just uh, uh, continue to uh, uh, use God as a secondary thing in our life. He should be the very first thing in our life. Uh, when we, you know, especially with going, what's going on right now, we, we need to be in constant prayer. Uh, I, can't, I can't reiterate that enough um, of, of who and what we're doing and, and, uh, you know, uh, I hope, you know, we said earlier about us calling. I hope some of you who hear my voice once in a while on the phone, uh, I'm sure you're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, it's Tom. What's he want? Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're just trying to reach out to help. Uh, and uh, so and, I, and some of you uh, I'm, having, I'm having a great conversation with. That's a good way to, to know somebody, you know, is, is to sit and kind of chit-chat a little bit on the telephone and, and see what's up and, and – um, but stay in contact, you know. It, 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 it is, it's, it's almost, it's a physical need for people to, to be in physical to contact with one another. Uh, I mean, we, we all uh, see that, uh, you know, if Pastor Mark and I are together out someplace, we know everybody, right? I mean, we, it, it, I mean, we can't so you go. You don't know, I yeah. know. And, yeah. and it, it's awful that we, when we go someplace, we say, okay, let's go. It'll take us 15 minutes. We'll get this done. We'll get back to church. We'll get this finished. Two hours later, we come back because we run into everybody, and and usually it's you know give somebody a high five, or give somebody a holy hug, or something that we see somebody. Now it's like, yeah, what's up? You know, uh, it feels weird, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah. It, it is a little different for us. Uh, but but listen, that that comes along with that too. Just because you feel safe, right, and you think that you're healthy and you're safe, that doesn't mean the person you're coming in contact with feels the same way. Okay. Or the 20 people you come in contact before you met that person. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Multiplication. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that, that passing it's on. That's where it needs to stop. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's multiplying. So, who we've been yeah. yeah. So be, you know, be, be, be uh, thoughtful in that process, you know, uh, because, you know, it, it is, a, it is a, uh, a scary, scary. It's, it's not like it used to be, you know, when we were kids, we got chicken pox, right? And, 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 if, and if you were a kid and you saw someone have chicken pox, you know, stay away from them. I don't want chicken pox. You know, uh, so that's kind of the, the way it is right now. Is we just don't know who has what. It, you know, it's not like that. You, know, you have something wrapped around your neck says, "I have the virus." You know, uh, so so do that. Be you know. Um, I, I, I heard uh, um, what's the pastor at S uh, Saddleback Church, Rick Warren. Rick Warren. I heard him say the other day. You know, God has given us a mind. He wants us to think. God does not expect his, his people to, to be dumb, basically what he said. And that's what we have to do right now. We have to be thoughtful. You know, we have to, we have to look uh, and, and be strong. And, you know, that's what you know, the story with Moses today is about. It's about being, uh, knowing that you can do it. You know, uh, I, th I think that a lot of times we, we just depend on other people to do things for us. And, and uh, when they're not there, we think, oh, how, how am I going to do this? What, how am I going to get through this? Uh, but lean on yourself. You're, you're able to do more uh, than what you think you can, right? Uh, when, you're, when you're pushed to do that. It, that's a lot of great American stories is when, when people are pushed in, in a situation to, uh, to uh, provide for themselves or provide for others. That's when great stories come out of this. And I'm hoping six months to, to a year from now, we can all sit here and hear wonderful, great testimonies uh, through, this, through this situation. And, and I know the Lord, he'll, he'll provide for us, you know. It's, it is a tough time, but, and I'm sure you're getting tired of seeing us like this, you know. Uh, but for some of you, it's probably better because you don't have to actually, you know, be within six feet of us. Pastor, you got more? No. You sure? Yep. You will after I get done. 
<laughs> uh, Pastor Cecily sent a, uh, a nice article. It was come off a blog by Jared Wilson uh, called Pastors, You Were Made for This. Talking about the, the last two weeks, how things have changed. Uh, I would question if I was, if I was made for this uh, personally. Uh, but the more I read the article, uh, the more I understood, you know, uh, how Christianity actually started. You know, in, in the conflict, how it was launched, it wasn't comfortable. Uh, it, was, it was very difficult. And that's, that's where this time frame that we're in, this season, whatever you want to call it, uh, it is wide open for ministry, yep. wide open for the good news of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be uh, in, a, in a close environment. It can be in any environment. It can be a phone call or anything, but that's what this speaks to. And one part of the article that I'm going to talk about just briefly, as I it just led right into what I was talking about, what I'm going to talk about is what COVID-19 can do for many of us uh, is strip life down to, a, to the essentials, motivations, and fears. And the gospel can speak into these things like nothing else. Now, that's where uh, I think that uh, we need to look at our essentials. When Tom said that he's an essential employee now, you know, that makes him feel good. But yet he has to go. Yeah. You know, if you're non essential, uh, you know, our prayers are with you because. Uh, Unlike any other time, the, the amount of people signing up for unemployment, not only in West Virginia, but around the country, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. And people are losing their jobs, and small businesses are really struggling. And, and the struggle is that they know they're not open, but the struggle is, are we going to be able to reopen? You know, so there's so much of that. So what are our essentials when, we, when we're stripped down and we get in this and we're in it and and we have frustrations. We've shared frustrations with each other. But we know that we take it. We know we love each other. And we know that we'll never forget that. Yep. Is that right? right. Am I just speaking for myself? No, no you're right. Absolutely. Okay, well, I just want people to see that, to validate that. So, but two essentials that, I'm gonna, that I think we need to have. Uh, one is to love God. And the other is to love Jesus. When you align those two essentials and let that be the, when John 15, 5, 15 somewhere, talks about uh, he is the vine, we're the branches. Away from him, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. In this time, you know, I think that's what people want to want to hear, that, you know, this is the worst news you can have, or this is the best news you can have. A lot of people don't like to hear, I don't know. We don't know. And, and to know that if we don't know, who knows? Who is that? And we, we look at God. We need, to, we need to love God. We need to love Jesus through all of that to stay connected to him in, in his word, in, in our prayer. Uh, one thing that I think is also a, an essential for us is gratitude. We need to be thankful. Uh, we got our medical, our first responders, our teachers, our food service people, our pastors around the country, around the world. I mean, they are sacrificing uh, just their family to get in the front line and to help in any way that they can. And with that gratitude comes contentment. We can be content. If you look in Luke 17 in, in verse 11... It says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. That was what they were supposed to do. When you were cleansed from something, you went to show the priest. One of them, one of them when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, 
rise and go your faith has made you well mm-hmm. okay now there's there's another there's a second healing there okay the leprosy was healed first and then he became well and it was well with his soul the love of Jesus came into his life that one out of the ten was grateful enough of what Christ did for me to come back and say thank you Jesus I think an essential in our life in this time we need to be thankful you know don't be that's not fearful okay you need to be smart I like that better than fearful you need to be smart but we need to be thanking some way thanking all those who are who can't distance themselves yeah. right. Absolutely. you know right yeah. I mean the, the medic I think of the medical people those first responders Uh, I think I saw on the news this morning 3,000 New York City policemen were off off, and even the head of the whole detective unit now is confirmed positive Mm -hmm. with COVID-19 because they're there they go man we need to thank God in the morning we need to thank him at bedtime for maybe the little things the hard things but the huge things thank God for others that are doing what they are doing you know our truck drivers those who make the food those who are trying to shift their uh, uh, business to making something else from making bumpers to making you know machines to keep people alive you know there's so much there's so many openings for ministry in this time uh, that I get maybe too excited about it maybe I become not smart about what I do. Amen? Come on. Yeah, amen. I mean, amen. you guys, I we mean, I'm, I'm really we not because the, I just get this and, and uh, my mind keeps rolling and it won't stop. Uh, there's, just, there's just so much. And, uh, but I want you to be thankful and I want you to thank God. You know, thank God that uh, you're safe. Yeah, amen. And your family. Thank God for those who are keeping those healthy, trying to save their lives, because it is a life-saving thing that they're trying to do for those who contract this virus. It just breaks my heart. I don't, uh, when, you, when you think about, uh, and Pastor Cecily mentioned one today, but, but young mothers going in to have their babies, maybe a first child, and it's by themselves there's no one there Mm -hmm. Uh, dad's not there Uh, we're in a time that our peers have never been in this is all new right it is and and we're doing what we feel is right and what we feel is right is we're leaning closer to god we're going to keep asking him and looking for him and praying to him. Are we going to have frustrations? Yes. Are we going to try not to make the wrong decision? Absolutely. But man, there's a wide open opportunity for you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with somebody. Maybe a neighbor from porch to porch. Maybe pull up in a car at a drive through when you pick up that dinner or at lunch because you definitely can't go in all kinds of opportunities yeah. I've talked way too much I yield back the rest of my time <laughs> I'm watching too much on it go ahead no you're not but I will say God in, in his way um, so we're going to set this up with a video and um, oh, yeah. I think good video uh, Mark and, and Tom I'm not sure that, that they've watched it yet or I seen did. it yet that was a great um, video but we're going to set this up with a video, so hopefully it will just focus your mind on um, who God is. We know, recognize that there's struggles. Uh, I think you've probably seen that we're struggling too, um, but we're all trying to uh, do the best that we can and above all, trust God and just know, go back to wh- where he's always provided before yep. and have faith and then come alongside each other. Yep. If, if I can, I just want to close with this as my part. I know we're, we're running a little long today. but I thought you closed just a little bit ago. I, I thought I did. But, he opened you know. again. Okay. <laughs> uh, John 4, um, we see the, the, 
the, Jesus comes to the woman at Jacob's well, and uh, verses 23 and 24 uh, couldn't be more, more for us today than it, than it ever has. Um, so John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, verse 23, it says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh su such to worship him. So we, need, we still need to worship him, right? 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. So we still need to worship. We go back to, to, to what Moses was doing. He's raised his hands high for the strength of God um, to, to be a strength to those who are looking at him uh, in their battles. And right now we're in a battle. There, make, no, make no mistakes about it. We keep hearing everybody say we're, we're in a, a faceless war because we can't see uh, what, we're, what we're fighting against. But we are fighting. Amen. And as Christians, we know that we have fought our, our entire lives. Many of you have fought so hard and so, so, so tough to be where you are now, right? I mean, yeah. us three can say that. We can go back and look at some of the things we fought through in our lives to be where we're at, what we're doing now. Uh, so continue to worship our Lord. He is worthy of our praise. Uh, and uh, and I, uh, I, I, am, I am positive uh, when we look back on this, we're going to see just the, how good God is in our lives. So um, I think that's, that's the end of my part there, yeah. pastors. So whoever wants to do what now? You want to Pastor, close us in prayer? Go ahead. All right. I want to say this before okay. you pray, right. Pastor. I love you very much. I forgot to do that in the first two. <laughs> you okay? forgot to tell everybody you love. I forgot them. to tell you I love you, and uh, I've kept him awake. Yeah, it really. Uh, I want you to always know that, uh, but I ask you to forgive me for not saying it. But uh, we're loving you at a distance, even though that is a distance. You know, we we feel your presence and uh, long to to see your face again. Uh, my prayer is that when the horn blows and we're allowed to do everything again, uh, that there's not enough chairs in this building because you are the church, Amen. Right. Yep. not this building. Right. We're going to bring the church in here, and we're going to celebrate, right. a huge celebration. Yeah. Pastor. All right. Let's close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can be together. Father, we thank you for the technology and the ability that we have yes. that we can share this time. We know that it's all a gift from you. And God, we just ask that you be with each one of us, uh, those that are watching, Father. Um, we know that, that everyone is facing uncertainty, facing difficulty, whether it's financial, health, worries. Father, you know them all. And so, God, I just pray that above all things, we will worship you. Yes. That we will look to you. We will trust you. And, God, that we will remember you have prepared us for this, that we're not alone, and that you are always yes. with us. Yes, Lord Jesus. Gracious God, please just, just be with all of those who need you now, those who are on the front lines, Father, those that are just keeping things running for us, the things that we need desperately, whether it's health care or protection from the police. Father, even those working in Walmart and the mail, those yeah. at the grocery stores, we are so very thankful, and we ask a hedge of protection around them. And gracious God, we just thank you most of all for who you are, because it's all about you. Yeah. And Father, may we humble ourselves, kneel before you, and just worship you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Love everybody. Love you guys. Love you guys. See ya.